praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Oh, I say praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We welcome you once again to the Super Champions Hour of the Jesus Cabot Ministry, JCM for short, formerly called Jesus Glory Ministries. And as I've been saying, the Cabot is the total glory of God. Is the Hebrew word for the total glory of God, Kabod. So you should take note of, and it involves everything about the glory of God, even including the Shekinah glory, which is the manifest glory of God. It involves the works of God, the miracles of God, the pomp and pageantry, the resplendent glory, the brilliance, and everything that you can talk of the majesty of God. And today we are introducing a new series, Educating and Training of Your Inner Man, that is to say, your human spirit. And we'll be dealing with your human spirit a lot. And I've told you that the Bible basically deals with our human spirit, the inner man, more than any other subject you can think of. Paul calls him the inner man or the inward man, and the Apostle Peter calls him the hidden man, of the heart and I've told you that the human spirit is what the Bible calls the heart the heart and it's a simile that means it's a figure of speech figuratively not literally so when the Bible is dealing with the heart it's not dealing with the biological heart that pumps blood because the biological heart that pumps blood is the center of the physical body so the spirit soul body of a man the spirit is the center and we have learned that man is a spirit having a soul of the mind emotion and will and dwelling in a physical body with the five physical senses so you are not the body you are not the mind you are not the brain you are the invisible person inside your human spirit and we said just like we train our mind and train our body you need to educate and train your inner man, your human spirit. And we've learned from Proverbs 4, 23, which tells us that guard your human spirit. Guard it with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Everything concerning your personal life, everything concerning your relationship, everything concerning your community, your nation, and this world comes out of the heart, comes out of the human spirit of a person. And the, what we see outside wars and goodness and fighting and poverty and betrayers all come out of the human spirit as Jesus Christ alluded to. Out of your heart comes evil things. Out of your heart comes good things. Fornication, adultery, wickedness, violence and death and stealing all come out of the human spirit. And Jesus said, make the human spirit the tree good and the fruit will be good. And make the human spirit that is the tree of your life evil and only evil things will come out of your fall. A person is known by his or her fruit. So it's a follow-up to the series we did on We Are Spirit Beings and then number two, right and wrong believing. And I promise you that we'll handle it. And I said I've dealt with it on other platforms and it took us 160 sections which if you divide it into into the Sundays that we deal with on Super Champions Hour then it's going to take us three whole years but I'm going to use eight sections to deal with it so it will be in a summary form so we now go straight to educating and training of your inner man and I said it concerns your human spirit We'll be dealing with seven factors. Everybody say seven factors. Seven factors. So I'll give you the seven factors. Then today we start dealing with the first of the seven factors. Number one, giving God's word first place in your life. That is the first one. Giving God's word first place in your life. Number two, practicing the word of God. Number two, practicing the word of God. Then number three, following the witness of the human spirit your human spirit listening to your inner witness then we'll go to number four obeying the voice of your human spirit that is your conscience 
obeying the voice of your human spirit. That is your conscience. Then number five, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we are not dealing with all the nine gifts as written in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but we're dealing with how the gifts of the Holy Spirit comes to us, especially the revelation gift. So we're dealing with visions, dreams, and voices. Then number six, building yourself through prayer. Number six is building yourself through prayer. And number seven, counseling of matured, spirit-filled Christians. And you can add a few to it. So today we start with the first of the factors. We take precedence over all the other factors even. So we have not listed everything in a, a descendancy or ascendancy concerning its important. But the number one actually is the most important of all, giving God's word first place in your life. The very first step in building your new creation, human spirit, is to give the word of God first place in your life. And we see that we'll be dealing with Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, 23, 24. 20, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, 21, 23, 24. So we start with, my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ears to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart for their life to those who find them and help to one's whole body. That's Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. So later, when we are going, you will see that being held to your whole body has alternative understanding. When any teacher tells a class of students that attention, that means stop whatever you are doing and focus and listen to me, the teacher will be telling the student. So if God says that, attend to my word, he says stop all that your hustle buzzle, the things you think are most important, the things you don't think they are important, and listen to me, God, listen to my word. Every distraction must stop when the teacher says, class attention. Give me first place. That's what the teacher means. And that's what God is saying to you. Give him first place. You must value God's word above any other thing in life. Have you decisively taken such a decision? Now let me give you a clue. Whenever God's word is being read, we'll consider that one. As a subtopic, whenever God's word is being read, I'll be giving you some salient points. Whenever God's word is being read, so the verse 20 says, Turn your ears to my words. Proverbs 4 20. Whenever God's word, that is the Bible, is being read, stop everything and listen. We are here not talking about preaching of sermon when somebody is preaching, no. If somebody is preaching, that will be full of the man's own words. So that's what we're talking about. But if he's reading the scripture, if he's on the radio or the TV, and somebody is preaching and reading the Bible, listen. Later, when he's making his commentary on it, you can you can let go. We are here talking about any passage or verse that is being literally read from the Bible. Stop all things, then, and listen. This will teach and discipline every fiber of your being and every cell of your spirit, soul, and body that they must give credence and preeminence to God's word. You are disciplined. We say you are cultivating, training, and discipline and developing your human spirit. And every cell of your spirit, every cell of your soul, every cell of your body must be instructed that anything they are doing, they are evolving. And God's word, the Bible is being read. They must stop and listen. And are you prepared to put into practice this truth of God's word immediately? Now, we we'll consider this also as a point here. Don't read the Bible as a storybook. What did I say? 
don't read the Bible. So I want you to personalize it. Say, I won't read the Bible. I won't read the Bible as a storybook. As a storybook. Why should I say that? It is because this will discipline your spirit. Although the Bible contains stories and history, yet it is neither a storybook nor a history book. It is God's word. Verse 21 of Proverbs chapter 4 says, Do not let them out of your sight. Remember, I say, my son, God is speaking to you. Attend to my words. Don't let them out of your sight, my word. When reading the Bible, fix your eyes on the words. Meditate on them till you get an illumination of what God was putting across to you. Do you flip or just hurry up in reading? When you sit behind the Bible, you just flip, flip, flip the Bible like this and you are in a hurry. No. Sit behind it. Fix your eyes on it. Read and reread. Don't just read a portion and raise your head into the skies. Fix your eyes. The Holy Spirit will give you an illumination that will throw more light of the word. It's not English you are reading. Though you are reading English, it's not Greek, though it is so. It's not your home language. It's not Spanish, though it is so. But it is God's word. So the Holy Spirit will unveil the real meaning unto you. Now, the word of God must enter into your human spirit. That's another point you must take note of. Say the word of God, the word of God must, enter must enter into my human spirit. Into my human spirit. What? Does verse 21 of Proverbs chapter 4 say it said, keep them within your heart, keep them within your human spirit. Now meditate on, study, and confess the word of God with your mouth until it becomes one with your human spirit. Confession is a critical aspect of meditation. When we say confession, we are not talking about confession of sin. Confession means saying the same thing with God. The faith life evolves much about confessing, speaking with your mouth. Now, Colossians 3.16 affirms this. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in your heart, in your human spirit richly. Now, giving the word of God first place in your life takes an effort. Everybody say effort. Effort. How much do you put in day by day? How does God's word build you up? We'll look at verse 22 of the Proverbs chapter 4. It says, For they are life to those who find them and help to one's own body. Now, what is the meaning? In relation to your spirit, your human spirit, God's word infuses more of the life of God, zoe in Greek, into your inner man. This is what Jesus Christ was asserting in John chapter 10, verse 10b. He said, I came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. To give you God's life and to the fullest. And then in relation to your body, it provides healing and strength to your physical body. The authentic reading of that verse, if you have a good Bible, or a simple Bible with the full look, look at it. The alternate reading in some versions of the Bible we say verse 22 means a medicine to all your flesh. So the, the Hebrew word that was there that was introduced as health, it also can be read medicine. God's word gives your spirit man Zoe eternal life and then it becomes medicine to your body to give you health. As the word of God builds your human spirit, it is also, or it also serves as medicine to all your flesh. You can be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Or even it can prevent sickness and disease from entering into your physical body. Now, have you seen how critical God's word is to the educating and training of your inner man 
Will you take this step to make this a reality in your life? In training and educating your human spirit. That's something that we consider also as a point. As we have seen, the first step to building up your spirit is to give first place to the word of God. You are to value God's word, the Bible, above anything else, both in heaven and this present world. God is transcendent, that is, is distinct and higher than his creation, and invisible. Yet he has given us his word and caused it to be written down. Consider God's word, the Bible, as your final authority in life affairs. Now let's look at Psalm 138, verse 2. It says, Abide down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your loving devotion and your faithfulness. You have exalted your name and your word above all else. So, what value do you place on God's word? Somebody has asked a question. Whether the name of God and the word of God which is higher. The King James Version said, Thou have magnified your word above all thy names. But the alternative uh, reading of it, that's why the NIV others put it together. You see, the word of God expresses who God is. The name also expresses who God is. But when they measure the name, we don't have an idea of what it means. So his word also will express what the name stands for. And that is just that. So what we are saying today is that give God's word first place in your life. Everybody say, I'll give God's word first place in my life. I'll give God's word first place in my life. My life. That is very, very important in your life. You give God's word first place. You give God's word first place. And that's what I do. I stop everything to listen to God's word. I'm not talking about sermon, as I said. And I've been practicing this for almost 40 years. It will build your spirit. You listen to everything. You listen to news uh, being read on the radio. You listen and read newspapers, magazines. You read textbooks and the likes. And many things concerning your profession which you think are very important. You are involved in financial, banking, calculations and the like. Economics, philosophy, everything that we can think of. The most important thing is God's way. How much do you follow it? And that is food for your inner man, your spirit. As Proverbs chapter 4 tells us. And also, Hebrews chapter 4 says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any tool and sword. It's quick and powerful. What does it do? It divides the soul and spirit and also the joints and marrow and is able to discern the intents and the thoughts of your heart. It deals with your spirit, it deals with your soul, of your mind, emotion and will. And also, it deals with your physical body and then it will deal with everything around you, your relation with one that you and your spouse, you and your children, you and your parents. It deals with you and uh, uh, the people you work with, whether they are your juniors or they are your seniors. It deals with employees, employers. It deals with economic issues, political issues, everything like spiritual things. It deals with it. The Word of God. God's Word, the Bible. I'm not talking about somebody running around today and say he or she is a prophet. He may be a prophet and speaking, but that is not what you give credence to. The written word, that's what we call the Bible, is the written word. God's word is spoke by prophet, is spoke by apostle, but it's written down and have been checked. There were many writings around and there were many sayings, but then God made sure that he sorted them out over the ages and then we have the bible which is a sure word david said your word has been tested seven times and has been purified more than silver and gold give god's word first place in your life that's the first factor and that takes 
precedence over the rest. The six others I'll give you, I'll not put them in the order of importance, but this first factor is in the order of importance. All the rest follow after it. If you don't give God's word first place in your life, then of course you are just beating about the bush. That's the way you put your inner man. Your spirit gets to know that it must give credence to God's word. Your soul gets to know. Your body gets to know. And you will build and you will be strong as the word of God tells us in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, pray that everyone who listens and views this program will decide from today that of all things that they hear and see, whether in pictures or video or written materials, or somebody speaking to them physically, they will give credence and first place preeminence to the Bible, God's way, that they themselves will read the Bible and they will meditate and confess the word as well as listen whenever they hear the Bible being read, read, because they know God has magnified his word above everything in heaven, on earth, under the earth. In Jesus' name, we call it down. Now, I want you to give your life to Christ. If you haven't given your life to Christ, I for you are non starter. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus you, are you are the Word of God that became flesh, that became flesh was, incarnated was incarnated to show us the way to, show us the way to God the Father. To God the Father. For, you said, for you said, You are the way. You are the, the, truth the truth and the life, and, the life. and no one comes to the Father, no one comes to the Father except, by you. except by you. You died on the cross, you died on the cross. According, to the according to the scriptures, according to the word of God, according to the, word of the, God. Bible. the Bible, on the cross, on the cross. And, you were buried and you were buried for three days. For three days. Thereafter, Thereafter, you were raised to life, raised to for, life. My for my righteousness. Come into my life, Come into my life. be my Lord. My and personal savior and, personal and rule my life, rule my life forevermore. forevermore in jesus name in jesus name i call it down, I call it down. amen amen having given your life to christ you need to do this for spiritual exercise daily daily number one the word of god comes feed on the word of god is food for your spirit man do it daily feed on it number two pray to god it's a physical exercise like breathing and breathing out. And pray in the matchless name of Jesus. It's the name that God hears. Then number three, assemble yourself with people of like mind who believe the Bible is first place, not the words of any apostle, today's prophet or apostle, or any archbishop or pope. But they give credence to God's word. Then number four, tell others, According to the scriptures, it says we must witness and break our death unto Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the first factor to build and train and develop your inner man. And it takes presence over everything. Give God's word first place and let it be your final authority as well. God is the beginning of your life issues as well as the end. Let nothing else in this world be first in your life. And let it not be final. When every argument comes, everything on geopolitical issues, everything on economics, everything on spiritual things, everything on social life, the family, entertainment, always ask yourself, what does the Bible say? What the Bible says counts more than the opinions of people. Don't run around people. You say they are experts and ask them their opinions. You run dick jockeys, their opinion. Radio, TV presenters, their opinion. Entertainment leaders, their opinion. And pastors, their opinion. They're, what the bishop says, as bishop says, do not matter. What the Bible says is what matters. Say amen to that. Amen. <laughs> until then, until then, we'll meet again. I say shalom to you. The peace of God rest with you. And may the joy of the Holy Ghost and may the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all, even now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment on our channel.